Hi, it's Emily from Kids Lit Book Love. I'm here to talk to you today to do a little review of The Princess and the Goblin. Love this book. Absolutely love it. I just finished reading it for the very first time. This book was written by George MacDonald and it was published in 1872. Um, George MacDonald was a Scottishman and he wrote, um, he's very famous for several books, some children and adult sort of fantasy fairy tale. Princess and the Goblin, The Princess and Curdie was the sequel, but he had like 11 children and his children were always demanding stories. So he wrote these books for his children, these stories. This is a Puffin Classics children's um, edition. I love this Puffin Classics. Um, they're small, they're quaint. Just to show you a size ratio, here's my iPhone. So they're not that big, um, but you, and you can find a lot of the other books that they do in here, a lot of the classics. I love these editions, they're easy to read. So let's talk about The Princess and the Goblin. Um, age range for reading, you know, it really just depends. This definitely has elements of Gothic literature. And if you're not familiar with what makes up Gothic literature, uh, traditionally, when you think of Gothic literature, we think of uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, the original Gothic novel, The Castle of Otranto, uh, Jane Eyre, Rebecca, the book Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca, are also all Gothic novels. And Gothic books have um, certain elements to make it recognizable, and one of those elements includes things like dark settings, dark settings that are sort of looming and mysterious like castles, dungeons, chambers, uh, underground caverns. We often have um, sort of English countrysides also that are misty and dark and wet and kind of gloomy. And we have generally um, sort of also fantasy fairy tale. We have usually somebody who usually the female in Gothic literature is in distress having to be rescued by somebody and we have a sense of also in gothic literature of the grotesque the grotesque meaning a little bit of horror uh, ter terrific sort of creatures and and settings and events and sort of medieval feelings so you do get a lot of that in this i came across a few vocabulary words that were difficult that even i didn't know not that many just a few but i just love this book it catches you right up front it takes you into this sort of misty, sort of land of the mist sort of setting, very mystical. And um, the premise of the story is the Princess Irene, I think I've heard it said, be, said Irene, but I say Irene. She lives, it's almost a little Cinderella-ish. She lives, she has a father who's the king who is always gone, but he only comes occasionally to visit her. She lives with all her nannies and her staff and her men at arms who protect her in this castle. And she's a very innocent child that is very curious and always looking sort of on a, on a growth pattern, something we t see very typically in um, children's literature. And she sort of is an, she's exploring a lot and she meets a little boy named Curdy who's a minor. So there's a definite division of classes. We have the royalty class and the sort of, you know, serf or lower division class, very clearly seen in this book. And she meets this boy, it's portrayed that he's a little boy because they talk or they kind of play or, and she runs into him a few times and he's, he goes in with his father down into the mines underground. And, but then later and toward the end of the book, I was very surprised when there was a scene that said that Curdie swept the princess up into his arms and lifted her up to her father on the horse. So then suddenly I was thinking maybe he's a teenager, but maybe she's 10, 11, 12 then, I don't know, but to lift up... You know, you'd have to be bigger definitely to do that. So um, basically there is an underground world that kind of reminded me of, God, was it the time machine um, where there's sort of an underground world of living creatures where the goblins live underground, which are sort of the, were, were originally scorned, like a scorned species and sort of. They don't like light. They don't come out to the world above. But it's interesting because Curdy, who's underground, and even the princess eventually sees them underground through the caves and watches them. And, they, and the goblins have their own sense of their sort of their own hierarchy. They have a king and a queen goblin, and they're having a banquet and a ritual and all these things underground. But they, and they have this sort of evil plot to capture the princess, to I think make the princess marry a, a goblin or something like that who thinks they're royalty in their own sort of goblin culture. 
and Curdy catches on to the plot and tries to warn and prevent that and save the princess. So, um, I want to read you, and I love the prose. I just love how the book reads. There are some wonderful quotes. Um, and Irene finds in the castle, in the tower, she finds an old woman who she, the woman says is her grandmother. And no one else has ever seen her or can see her except Irene. So she's very, very old. She's like apparently hundreds of years old, but very wise. And she sort of guides Irene and she has these conversations with her. And then other times Irene goes to look for the grandmother and she's not there. There's no evidence of her. So it's a little bit mysterious. But during this one conversation with her grandmother, she says, oh, okay. So the grandmother, at one time Irene goes back and the grandmother suddenly looks like a young, beautiful woman. She transformed. And when Irene goes up, she says, why do you call yourself old? You are not old at all now, grandmother. The grandmother says, I am very old indeed. It is so silly of people. I don't mean you, for you are such a tiny, wonderful thing who couldn't know any better. But it is so silly of people to fancy that old age means crookedness and witheredness and feebleness and sticks and spectacles and rheumatism and forgetfulness. It is so silly. Old age has nothing to do, whatever, with any of that. The right old age means strength and beauty and mirth and courage and clear eyes and strong, painless limbs. I am so much older than you think. So beautiful writing. I love the way she phrases things. And it's not really said what happens to Irene's mother ever in the book. And... When Irene was first first meeting the grandmother, I interpreted it as she uh, sort of a magical sense of she w was interacting with an older, older version of herself who was there to talk to the young Irene. That's how I interpreted it. But as the book goes on, there are plenty of hints that could be interpreted as this technically was Irene's mother who in an old version and a young version who would come to talk to her because because she gives Irene a gift, a magical gift, a magical thread that she can follow that saves her later. That, and, and she says, I only give wonderful gifts like this to my children. And, there's, and then the, she gives Irene a ring, who later um, the father says was the mother's ring. So, but no one else can ever see her. So she's maybe like a spirit. It's not really said. So a little bit of that fantasy element. I really recommend it for an adult read. Um... This is, again, the Puffin Classics edition. It does have illustrations in it, black and white. I read this. It did take me about three days to read. Of course, I only had time to read for about an hour a day. Um, you could probably read it in two days or a day if you have a lot of time to sit. But I, again, not necessarily younger reading. It really just depends on your children's level. Love it. Can't recommend it enough. George MacDonald, and he... Um, I have Princess and the Curdy coming in the mail. This one, The Princess and the Goblin, is much easier to locate a copy of. The Princess and Curdy, which is the second edition, uh, a few that came, you know, years after this, is very hard to find in trade paperback. And so I found an old vintage 1906 printing of it in beautiful condition on eBay for like $15. It's coming in the mail. I can't wait to get it and read it, and I will do a review of that soon. Definitely tell me what you think of The Princess and the Goblin. And I mentioned this in my Beauty and the Beast video. The Eastern Press has a Classics of Enchantment leather-bound set. And this is one of the books in there. And I have that on my wish list. So thanks for watching. And I'd love to hear what you think.